Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Amanda, and I'm coming to you live from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. And we're so excited that you decided to join us and invite us into your home today as we explore the world and the life of penguins. Are you excited about penguins? because they are one of our most popular animals here at the aquarium. And if you like penguins, go ahead and raise your hand. Are you raising your hand? Well, would you like to learn more about penguins today? Go ahead and raise your hand if you wanna learn more about penguins. Well, good, I know that there's some hands raised out there and we are going to go exploring. So are you ready to explore? Well, as we explore together, you are welcome to text in any questions that you have to the number that's on your screen right now. It's 562-286. 1838. And children, make sure you have your parents' permission before you text in, um, as text messaging rates will apply. Well, if you were to go exploring and looking all around the world for penguins, where in the world do you think you would look for them? Where do penguins live? Well, think about our planet as being like a big ball. We call it a sphere, right? If you think about the Earth, it's round, and there's different parts of the Earth. So if you were to make yourself into a big world with me, you were to go like this, make a big round earth. So now you are the world, you're big and round. Now, if you were to go just up at top, like this, up at the very top where your fingers come together, that is what we would call the North Pole. So the top of the world is the North Pole, okay? And then if you were to go like this, making yourself round down here, and down at the bottom, at the very bottom in the center would be the South Pole. Now, since we have the North Pole at the top and the South Pole at the bottom, let's go ahead and split it in half because the world is split in half with something called the equator. So go ahead and put your hands like this and make a big straight line right through the middle. So you've got the North Pole, the South Pole, and the equator. So here we have a flattened out version of the world. So the world is round, but if we flatten it, we can make a map that looks like this. So if this was what we just made, where would the North Pole be on this map? Well, it would be way up here, right in the center here. This would be like where the North Pole is. So the top area of the world. So at the bottom would be the South Pole right down here in the center. And then what did we say that line was that would go right through the middle? It would come right through here. That's the equator. So where do penguins live? Do they live at the North Pole, right up here? Do they live at the South Pole or do they live around the equator? Well, I'm going to give you a hint because we're showing it to you on this map. So if you see an area that looks blue, that is where penguins live. So where do you see penguins living? Do you see any in the North Pole? Do you see any up here? In fact, do you see any in the top half of the world? No, I don't see any blue at all. So penguins don't live up in the North Pole. Where do penguins live? That's right, the South Pole. So down here, all these blue areas are places where you could find penguins. Now, around the equator, there's something you should know. It's really warm. The temperatures are really, really warm down there or at the equator. Up at the top and at the bottom, it can be really cold. So what type of environment do penguins live in? Obviously pretty cold environments, but notice if you start to go up, there are some penguins that live a little bit closer to the equator. And these penguins, they're close, but they're not quite in the Northern hemisphere, but they're really close. Uh, there can be all sorts of different habitats that penguins live in. Usually it's pretty cold down here, but some live in different habitats. What I want you to do is look at a picture or the scene that we have of our penguin habitat. And I'd like you to tell me what you notice about it. So here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we have some penguins. And right now we have some that are out of the water. Notice we also have a water area for them to be in too. But what type of environment do you see? Do you think this is a type of penguin that lives where it's really cold all of the time? Or do you think that maybe this is a penguin that could live where there's no ice and snow? Do you see any ice and snow in this exhibit? No. So these penguins that you're looking at right here are called Magellanic penguins. And these are a type of penguin that do not require 
ice and snow. Oh, also I wanted to let you know that Miss Murphy's class is joining us today. Hello, Miss Murphy's class. And it looks like Brayden has a question. So Brayden wants to know how long can a penguin hold its breath? Well, that's a good question because we know that penguins do breathe air because look, you can see them around here. They are a type of a bird and they breathe air. But look at this one, where's he gonna go? Looks like he's going right into the water. And oh, went right underneath water. So penguins dive under the water and to do that, they need to be able to hold their breath. Now, if they're floating on top, it's no big deal, but they do dive underwater. And a penguin can hold its breath, depending on the penguin, um, from about, for about six minutes, some of them. So sometimes our Magellanic penguins don't hold their breath quite that long. It's usually about a minute and a half is how uh, long they might hold their breath. Here you can see, maybe I stood in front of them a little bit. We'll try to see if we see any other penguins that are swimming by. Um, oh, there we go. There's some penguins. Look at them. What do you notice about how they're swimming? Is there anything that stands out to you? Did you notice? How are they moving along? Well, the emperor penguin is a different type of penguin. They can hold their breath up to 20 minutes. So to finish answering Braden's questions, our penguins don't hold their breath for too long, uh, but the emperor penguin can hold its breath for about 20 minutes. So that's a really long time. This right here is an emperor. Oh, those are emperor penguins. <laughs> and then this is again on underwater view. So here are emperor penguins. What do you notice about their habitat? Hmm, it looks a little different than our Magellanic penguins, doesn't it? So the Magellanic penguins don't need to be in snow and ice. In fact, they live in the beachy areas. And these guys notice that there's, uh, there's a whole bunch of ice and snow around them. These are birds that live on Antarctica all year long. Now, remember when we looked at where penguins are found, not all of them were at the very, very bottom around Antarctica. Some of them are up a little bit higher. So a lot of penguins live in different areas, but this is one of the penguins that lives all year on the uh, continent of Antarctica, where it's very, very cold and snowy and icy. But what things do you notice about it? Does this animal look like you? Think about yourself. Well, what are some differences? What are some differences between you and the penguin that you, that you see here. Remember how earlier I said, raise your hand? Well, if you were to raise your hand and look at it, if you put your hands together, they don't look very much like what penguins have, but we could imagine that we had penguin wings. Do you see the wings on this penguin? Now, do penguins use their wings to flap them and fly? No, you're right, they don't. What do you think they use their wings for? How do the wings like these on these cute little Gen 2 penguins, how do they help them survive? They don't flap them to fly. What do you think these, do, these penguins are doing in this picture? Take a look at it. I love this picture. What do you notice about it? All right, well, while you're looking at those and making some observations, Samantha mentioned fluffy babies. That's what you saw in that picture earlier, right? That's one of the things you noticed. That's a great observation, Samantha. So did you see these fluffy babies? They look a lot different from the grown-ups, don't they? They look very, very fluffy. They have lots of extra feathers to help keep them warm. They have a special type of feather that's like, well, it's kind of like a downy feather or down, if you've ever heard of down. That's a special type of feather that helps keep birds warm. Does it look like they would need to be kept warm in this type of environment or this habitat? Sure. Would you like to actually look at some penguin feathers? I have some penguin feathers over at my special camera. So let's pull these up. Well, first of all, I have some feathers that do not belong to penguins. So this right here is a feather of our um, lorikeet. So a lorikeet has long feathers. Let's see. Let me try to make this a little bit brighter so maybe you can see the color. Lorikeets have really bright, beautiful colors. And you can see the green color on this one. And they have these feathers like this, but then where the feather attaches to the bird's body, well, this is very kind of long and skinny. Here's another feather. This is from uh, a seagull. Kind of hard to see. That one's a little bit too bright now. But now let me show you a penguin feather.
All right. So now, what do you notice that's different? Well, here, try to get close. Here's the lorikeet feather, and these are penguin feathers. Do you see all this fluffy stuff right here? All of that fluffy stuff, and let me change my brightness maybe a little bit more. That is what's keeping the penguin warm as they swim because, or even when they're out of the water, all of these little, criss, these little fluffy feathers will crisscross with the ones next to them and create some insulation that, help keep, that helps to keep them warm. Now, did you notice that they have a longer part of their feather here too, those tips? These are very small feathers. Did you notice the size difference? Yeah, the lorikeets have these long skinny feathers, whereas the penguins have much shorter feathers. Did you notice the dark tip on the end and how kind of, it's a little bit more pointed, whereas this part of the feather is much, like we said, fluffier to help keep them warm. Now, um, Noah in New York says, why don't baby penguins look like their parents? Oh, good question, Noah. So baby penguins, they don't actually have to, it takes them a while before they go into the water where they're swimming. So, oh, oh, perfect. I'm sorry, just learned that we have the picture of one. So let's take a picture of one of our, let's look at this picture of one of our baby Magellanic penguins. Look at how fluffy they are. Well, one of the reasons they're fluffy is because they don't go swimming in the water as soon as they're born. They have to wait a little bit longer. And so mom and dad will go swimming and they will go grab the food and bring it back to their babies to eat. And so the babies want to stay as warm as they can. And so that fluffier feathers that they have will help them to stay warm. Now when mom and dad come back and bring their food to the baby, guess what they eat? It's kind of a weird thought. Well, did you know that penguins usually eat some sort of fish? So some smaller fish, uh, they could eat squid, some Penguins actually will eat krill, the ones with the smaller beaks. But when they go fishing, it would be a long um, trip to go grab some fish and try to carry it all the way back to the baby and make sure it's a small enough one for the baby to eat. So what mom and dad penguin does, what they do is they will swallow it, kind of hold it inside of their body, and then they will kind of spit up food for their babies to eat. And so they kind of regurgitate their food to feed their baby chicks. So that's how these little babies get fed. But those fluffy feathers that they have help keep them nice and warm. Now, when they get older, they start to shed those feathers or what we call a molt. They'll molt their feathers and their coloring will get a little bit different. So that was the baby Magellanic penguin when it's really, really young. And then when it gets to be a little bit older up until about one year of age, they'll look like this. Notice how silvery they are. They don't have, you can see a little bit of this sort of white, um, white sort of crown, this little ring around it. It's got the white belly kind of, but it's a little bit more of a grayish color on the back compared to the adults. But then when they're about one year old, then their coloring changes because they have another molt. And when they molt at one year old, they look just like the adults and they have that dark back here, the bright white belly, and then they have that white sort of ring around their face. And these are the Magellanic penguins. So I think they look really cool. And when they're younger, they have that silvery sort of look. So now look at this picture. This is what it looks like in an area where Magellanic penguins are found. Notice, we call this a rookery. This would be an area where there's lots of penguins, now, can you tell which ones are adults or at least one year old and which ones are younger than one year? Look at this picture. Do you see penguins that look different? Go ahead and point to them. What ones look different to you? Well, what about this one right down here? Notice that it's kind of that grayish color we were talking about and it doesn't have those black and white lines that you see on the adults. And even this one, do you notice how different it looks? It looks different from this one. These are the same kind of penguins. These are all Magellanic penguins, but they're not all the same age. So remember, if they're one year or older, they'll look like this. If they're younger than one year, they might look like this or even be browner and fluffier. So great picture of what they look like in their natural habitat. And you notice the ocean and the beach behind them. So that's why here in Southern California in our exhibit can be 
quite fine for our Magellanic penguins. They don't need to have the snow and the ice to live in. So here's another picture of our underwater view of our penguins. So you can look at them and watch them swim as we look at some other questions that have been coming in. So Avram and Julia want to know what do penguins eat? And also, um, oh, we talked about the fact that they eat fish. Um, the fish that we feed our penguins here are herring and capelin. Uh, they also will eat squid, and we mentioned earlier that they uh, feed on krill. So there's another really cute penguin called the Adélie penguin. And the Adélie penguin is one that actually eats krill. And I want you to look at this picture. You see how cute it is? Look at the little tiny beak that it has. It has a much smaller beak because it doesn't eat some of the bigger fish that the other penguins eat. And so it eats krill. Now krill is really tiny um, stuff that lives in the ocean. So let me take this over to my camera again and I'll show you what krill looks like. So this is one of the things that our, that some penguins like to eat. I'm gonna zoom in, it's gonna look kind of crazy. So these are all little tiny krill that live in the water. So some penguins feed on something as small as this and other penguins will feed on uh, fish. This right here, can you tell what this is? Let me try to back out a little bit so you can see a little bit better. This one, let me try to change, oops, I'm making it brighter. Let's make it a little bit darker so maybe you can see it. Well, this is a model, so kind of what a real penguin book beak looks like. So this is the bill or the beak of the penguin, and then this is the area where its eye would be. And right inside this hard casing of bone right here, that's where the penguin's brain is, or that's where it would be if this was a real penguin skull. But notice this is a really long beak, and this is what the beak of our Magellanic penguins looks like, and they use them for eating fish. So a big longer beak, good for fish, a smaller, shorter beak like the Adélie penguin is good for krill. All right, thanks for that question. Also, I wanted to say hello to Golden Elementary School, the first grade class who's watching now. Thanks for joining us today. And then Charlotte at Golden Elementary wants to know, why do penguins have white bellies? That's another great question. Look at the bellies on these penguins. Look at how different they look from the back, the dark side of the back. So when penguins are in the water and they're swimming, if they were swimming, did you notice that they're not swimming upright, but when they swim, they kind of lean over like this and they're like a football shape swimming through the water. Well, when they're swimming through the water up on the top, they're really dark. And so if you were above the penguin and you were looking down on them, they would blend in with the deeper parts of the deep, dark ocean. But if you were swimming underwater and you were a leopard seal, which is a type of seal that eats penguins, if you were looking for something to eat, well, if you look up right at the top of the water where the sun is coming in, it's going to be a lot brighter. Well, if there's a penguin swimming, their underside being whiter is going to help them blend in with the sun and make it harder to see the penguin. So that's something that we call counter shading. Can you say counter shading? Counter shading. Counter shading is a type of camouflage that helps the penguin blend into its habitat when it's swimming. So that's a great question. And if you're careful and you look carefully at animals in the ocean, you'll probably notice that other animals have some counter shading too, where they're darker on the top and lighter on the bottom. Okay, so that was a great question. And then Ava wants to know, do sharks eat penguins? And I believe some sharks have been known to eat penguins as well. So yes, that is true, but they can also be eaten, as I mentioned earlier, by even leopard seals. All right, so here's a cute close-up picture. Let me move out. Oh, do you see? Do you see what it was doing? It was shaking its tail. Oh, now shaking its, its little wings. Now, when we think about wings on birds, we usually think about them for flying, but as we mentioned earlier, these wings are used a little bit differently. They're more like little paddles or like flippers that help it to swim through the water. So they keep them nice and stiff to help them to swim. All right, Gage wants to know, do penguins migrate? And actually Gage, yes, some penguins do. They actually will travel distances to eat and then come back to feed their chicks at home. So this would be like one of their home ranges. 
Uh, but it all kind of depends on where their food availability is. Where the food is going determines how far they might need to swim to get it. And also the temperature of the water could affect where their food is going to be. Now the emperor penguin that we saw earlier has the most incredible migration of 60 to 100 miles inland to breeding areas. Uh, so they'll make a journey on land. So they don't just swim through the ocean to another area, they will make this long trek. Now, how easy do you think it is to walk for a penguin? Since they can't fly for their migration like other birds do, they have to walk. How would you walk if you were a penguin? Well, does it look like they have long legs? No? Do you see the legs though? Yeah, you can kind of see some legs here. They look like very furry legs, but what we can't see is that their knees, you look at where your knees are, and we can bend our knees. Well, the knees of the penguin are way up underneath here, and it's hard for them to bend their knees very well. So it looks like they're just kind of waddling. They do bend them, but it's up underneath all of this stuff. So when they walk, they waddle. Can you waddle like a penguin? So yeah, and you'll also notice as they waddle that sometimes their heads are kind of moving back and forth as they're trying to pick up their feet and they'll put those wings out like they're little flippers to help them also balance as they're going. Do you think it would be easy to walk through all the snow? What would make it easier to walk through the snow? Well, did you notice how they all are following in a line? So these penguins are deciding, especially the ones back here, like we're gonna make the ones in front do all the work and they'll be the ones making the path through the snow. Have you ever had to walk through the snow before? It can be hard sometimes, but if somebody has walked ahead of you and you can follow in their footsteps, it makes it a lot easier. But sometimes there's another way that penguins choose to get around. Do you know what it is? If they wanted to move from here to here, and they were tired of walking, there's something else that they can do. And if we go back to the picture of our emperor penguins, you might notice some penguins that aren't standing up. Do you see them? Yeah, there's a penguin right here that's down on its belly. There are some penguins over here that are down on their bellies. And what they'll do is something called tobogganing. And they will get on their bellies and they'll push themselves with their little feet in the back to push them like they're going on a big sled. So those Gen 2 penguins that we were looking at earlier that were walking in the line, that would probably be a good way for them to get around too. If they just get tired of walking, they can just scoot on their bellies. So that would be fun. All right, there's some other questions. AJ wants to know, how do they swim fast enough to shoot out of the water? Well, let's look at their bodies again. What things would help this penguin to swim fast? Well, they definitely do have those flipper-like wings that they can use to push themselves through the water. And also look at their shape. Remember I said it was this shape that's kind of like a football or a fusiform. And so that makes it easier, their penguin shape, when they go through the water like this to slip through and allows them to swim pretty fast. Also, because their feathers are so tightly packed together, it makes that water just kind of go right on over them. And they don't even get a whole lot of water in between their feathers to help keep their bodies nice and warm and dry. So that's why it's so important that those penguins have those feathers to help protect them on the outside and keep them warm on the inside. So maybe, I don't know if we have any pictures. So sometimes our penguins don't spend as much time in the water. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, but here's a picture of a penguin swimming. So look at how the penguins are using their flippers to help them swim. And notice how they look like little footballs swimming through the water. Sometimes you'll see some little bubbles coming off of them and that's coming from those little spaces of air that are trapped between their feathers. But that's what you might be seeing. Oh, but yeah, so they swim really, really fast. And sometimes they get so excited when they're swimming and they're swimming so fast that they'll actually jump out of the water. So it's not just dolphins that jump out of the water. Penguins can do that too. And a behavior that we call porpoising. And so, they do generate a lot of speed. They can swim up to 25 miles per hour, which is pretty fast. Uh, and they can generate enough speed to jump right on out of the water, AJ. All right, so Wesley wants to know, why do the penguins have tags? That was a really good observation, Wesley. I'm glad you noticed that. So our penguins at the aquarium have special tags on their uh, wings, and that is to help us identify the penguins. Now, honestly, the aviculturists, which are the animal or the animal care team that works with the penguins that take care of them on a daily basis, they don't even need those tags. 
they can look at the penguins and they know who it is that they're looking at. They know the personalities of the penguins. They know all the little special markings that they have. They know how big they are, what their habits are. And so they don't really even need those markings. But for everybody else, and to make it easier to keep track of these black and white birds, they do have little tags that help us to identify them. So some of them you'll notice three different color beads. And so depending on the pattern of the bead and the color, it will identify what bird it is that we're looking at. And so if you wanted to learn more about our individual penguins, we have about 20 of them here at the aquarium, you can actually go to our website and learn more about our penguins, their different names and what their personalities are like. So it's kind of fun. Um, I don't know them all because I'm not with them all the time, but like I said, our aviculturists that care for them uh, know all of those things about the animals. Okay, Ava wants to know, how do penguins sleep? Well, oh, and also Antoinetta and Emma were wondering that same question. Well, penguins will actually close their eyes. So unlike fish that don't have eyelids, penguins do have eyes and they can close their eyes, but they'll come out on land and you might see them laying down. Sometimes they'll close their eyes and sleep standing up. So it depends on the type of mood they're in, but they do actually sleep. Um, Avram wants to know, do they have teeth? Oh, that's a really good question because we don't normally think about birds having teeth. So they don't have regular teeth, but they do have something that helps them hold on to the slippery fish when they go hunting. And it's kind of a weird thing, but I think that you're all, are you all interested in learning about this? Scientists, are you explorers and you want to see what the inside of a penguin mouth looks like? I don't know if we'll be able to show it to you. Hopefully we can. But inside, if we can't find the picture, just imagine with me, if the penguin was to open its mouth, they have these little tiny pointy things, there you go, that are sticking out. Doesn't that look crazy? I bet you didn't think that penguin mouths look like this. But these little pokey things that are sticking out help them when they're eating to make sure that the fish don't try to slip back out of their mouths again. And so it helps them keep their food going down the right way. So it helps them grip onto their slippery, slimy food. But yeah, that's inside their throat and inside their mouth. So they're not really teeth like our teeth. It's more like little projections, um, papilla, on the inside of their throats. So good question. I'm glad you asked. All right. Uh, Julia wants to know, how long does it take for a penguin egg to hatch? Ah, it depends, I think, a little bit on the type of species of penguins that you're talking about. Uh, but our Magellanic penguins, it takes, what did we say, about about one, somewhere between one and two months. And so this is what it looks like when, if you're looking at the egg of a penguin, this is, they're about the size that you could fit into your cupped hand. So if you were to cup your hand like that, that's about how big a penguin egg is, a Magellanic penguin egg. Um, other species can be a lot larger. And this is what we call candling, where we put light behind the egg so you can kind of see what might be on the inside of it. And um, that's where we can check how the, if there's a chick inside the egg or, or not. But then our Magellanic penguin will lay these, will create these little nests um, to sit on and to keep their eggs nice and safe until they're ready to hatch. And they, it does take them, in, the parents will actually stop feeding them about 10 days before they're big enough to go out and start swimming on their own. Because remember, they'll stay in their nest for a while because they won't be able to swim and they because they wouldn't stay warm enough if they did go into that really cold water. And so they'll be looking like this. So when they're looking like this, they're still, still staying in the nest and staying close to mom and dad. Um, and then once the parents stop feeding them, about 10 days later, these little birds will go out and then they will start to swim in the ocean once they've gotten a different set of feathers. All right, Julia wants to know how long does it take for a penguin age? Oh, that was, okay, we were talking about that. A penguin egg, egg to hatch. Um, Kelly said, how long? And Lola also wants to know, how long do they live? Well, that's a question that can depend, again, on the type of penguin. Uh, but the Magellanic penguin, like the one that we have right here in, at the aquarium, uh, they can live about 10 to 20 years. But here at the aquarium and in other zoos and aquariums, they could live potentially up to 35 years. So they can live a lot longer under human care because they're getting really great health care and really good food, and they don't have the dangers of predators that they would out in the ocean. So they can actually live longer under human care than they do out in their natural habitat in the ocean. Okay, and then let's see, we have another question from 
Um, Enzo wants to know how many penguin species are there. There are actually 17 penguin species. Uh, so 17 different ones and all represented here in these blue areas that you see around the earth. Okay, Leo says, why do penguins live in cold places? And again, they're prepared to live in the uh, cold environments because of those feathers that they have to help keep them warm. They also have a thick layer of blubber, of basically of fat underneath those feathers to help keep them warm. So they've got this thick layer of fat, then they've got their skin, and then they've got those downy feathers, and then the longer feather on the outside to help uh, them swim through the water. And let's see, Micah wants to know, why do penguins have a little bright orange color? Oh, so some of the penguins you may have noticed are not all black and white. So here's a king penguin, and they had that really pretty orange color right up here and a little bit of yellowish orange down here, and even on the bright, on that beak, it makes it really bright. And so that color can be used to attract mates. So when they are ready to have a little baby chick, this is one of the ways that, that mom and dad can find each other because the mom seems to really like those colors too. Uh, so that's what they're most likely used for. Um, and so, yeah, good question. Good observation. Not all black and white. Oh, and these are some of my favorite penguins. These are called the chin strap penguins because they look like they have a little strap that would go underneath where their chin is. So these are chin strap penguins. You can tell this one is a baby, right? It has that different coloring uh, that um, helps it to stand out as being a baby and not one of the adults. And also, did you, let's see, oh, there was another picture my friend Alicia kept bringing out that I didn't tell you what kind of penguin it was. It is one of the cutest penguins because it's the smallest of the 17 penguin species. It's called the little blue penguin, also called fairy penguins. Did you notice that these were not black and white, but instead have a bluish hue to them? So yeah, these penguins also don't live where it's always snowy and you don't see any snow and ice in this picture, uh, but they're very small. So they're only about one foot. Uh, so not very, very tall, but they are very, very cute. So these are the, the fairy penguins or the little blue penguins. All right. Um, did I get all the questions? I think I got all the questions that came in. But if you, oh, I still have another one from AJ. He wants to know, why are there, why are there mats in the penguin exhibit? Oh, observation. So in our Magellanic penguin or our Jim Keys penguin habitat, we have little black mats and they create a little bit of cushioning for our penguins so that their feet don't get sores on them because penguin feet are subject to get something called bumblefoot. Bumblefoot is when penguin feet are on surfaces that they're not always used to being on and can make them get little sores all over their feet. So these mats that you see right up here are there just to provide a little bit of cushioning and a different type of um, feel for our penguins when they get out of the water um, so that they're not always just on hard surfaces, but they have some of that, a mat. Kind of like if you're standing on a mat, you might notice maybe in your kitchen or in front of your sink, maybe mom or dad has a, a mat for, you to, for them to stand on if they're washing dishes a lot or something like that. Um, it's kind of like these little mats for the comfort of our penguins. So good questions. Well, I think we are out of time, but I hope you feel like you've learned some new stuff about penguins. You did a great job making some observations with me. Uh, so thanks for joining us today. And we have another program coming up in just a half hour, our ABCs Under the Sea uh, that you'll want to check out. So thanks for joining us today and have a wonderful time um, doing whatever you're doing, staying home and staying safe today. Also, I did want to let you know, if you're watching this at a later time, like on our YouTube channel, and you had some questions about penguins that you wanted to ask, you can email us at live at lbaop.org. And we would be happy to answer your questions, even if you weren't able to ask them live. So thanks for joining us. Have a great day.